Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking to you the main difference between consulate and VAR as well as how they're similar. We're going to explain how to answer this in a technical screen so that make, make sure you get all the points that you can because there's multiple levels to the question and make sure that you fully understand it with an example. If you enjoy this video and you like it, it's part of my 100 front end interview questions challenge course which just came out, has a 5 star rating, although there's only 13 reviews, but I encourage you to check it out. You can get it in the description below for just $9.99 or use the coupon code coding God. A common question you'll get about JavaScript is what is the difference between consulate and var? The reason they ask this is they want to see if you're up to date on current standards as well as just test your breadth of knowledge about JavaScript. Uh, one thing that I always like to say is that I try and cover is not only examples, but also the main differences. And, and really, this is a type of question where you can dive very deep. And I encourage you in all your questions to take advantage of that because most of the time it's not a simple yes or no answer. It is a how, how much breadth, how much depth do you have to it. So uh, what's the difference between console and var? const and let were added in ES6. The issue that they were trying to solve was that var was using what's called lexical scope and it was causing variable hoisting. And variable hoisting is where you are declaring a, a, a variable, a var, uh, and let's say you had it in a falsy statement. What would actually happen is if you were to try and act upon that variable later on, you could get undefined. and instead of a undeclared variable because what would happen is that even though we never actually touch that block of code, the code never ran, never hit that, it would hoist our variable and our, our code would actually render slightly different than how it would read, which is a huge issue. And so, um, you know, some, some sort of additional fallout of that is like you could have var i is equal to zero and it will actually do that in a for loop, for instance, and it will actually do that additional check in your i will be one larger than what the last iteration of your for loop was. So if you're going to use it after the fact, you have to account for that. Now, talking about constant let, those use block scope. Block scope is there to solve the issues that we just defined with a variable, with a variable hoisting and in the lexical scope that var was defined, essentially meaning that within that block of code, that falsy statement, it only exists in that block. So if we were to try and do something very similar, where we have a false if statement where we declare our, our variable, a let or a const, it would actually be undeclared because it doesn't exist and throw an error as you would expect it would. Now, the um, let is the reassignment type, reassignment type variable, very similar to var. Const is often used for unchanging values or constants. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't modify values Let's say we have an array, we'll be able to push to that array, we'll be able to pop from that array, but we won't be able to instantiate a new array. Same thing with objects, and then of course primitives, like booleans, uh, numbers, strings, those of course, once you assign them, they can't be changed. All right, so let's dive a little deep into consulate and var and really understand this concept of variable hoisting. You can see here we have this example function where we have a false statement a, uh, that never is going to run here, but we could see that, oh, well, we're instantiating a variable setting equal to 5, and what we're actually getting here is undefined. Now, if this was true, this would actually set the value to 5 and we would get it, which might seem a little strange and because what's happening here is how our code is actually being rendered out when we're dealing with this lexical, lexical scope is if we just comment this out, is in with var and the scope that it's in, it's actually doing what we mentioned earlier, which is variable hoisting. So it's as if we have var ex defined here, and this is what our code is actually doing, so it's getting undefined. Now, this is what var is doing, it's lexical scope. Now, block scope, let's go ahead and make this a let, and what we're gonna get is ex is not defined, undeclared variable, or something like that, essentially meaning they don't know what we're talking about, and it doesn't matter if this is true or false, because 
in this case, this variable only exists in the scope that you would expect in its block, which is right here. Now, that's variable hoisting. Let's talk a little bit. Let's close this real quick. And we'll talk a little bit uh, about const and let. So let is equivalent to var in which you can reassign values exactly like what we were doing here. But const is slightly different, uh, except let is, of course, in the block scope. And so is const. But const, we have uh, one more cool thing about it. So uh, let's say we have uh, con, ex con ex, and we set this equal to 5. Now, uh, we're getting an error here because we're not doing anything with it. Let's just, we'll appease the ESLint gods here. We'll go ahead and put con ex, throw a semicolon there. Now, what's happening here is we're simply setting the value and then we're referencing it. Now, let's say we wanted to uh, go ahead and set this equal to 6. What we're going to get here is an error. It is a constant. You're not supposed to reassign these values, especially primitives. You can see we're trying to uh, iterate here. They don't want us to do that either because it's we are reassigning the value here with our constant. Now, what may what may uh, stand out that might be a little bit hard for people to understand is uh, that those primitive types again those are our booleans, our strings, our um, numbers. We also have uh, other data structures like arrays and objects and in our example here we can actually modify this by just pushing a value to it such as two for instance and you can see we can go ahead and console out uh, conning x2 and I don't like uh, this error right here let's go ahead and comment that out and you can see we get two just fine and we're we're not getting an error here and of course we could do the same with a Go ahead and create a con constant ex con ex3, and we'll set this to an object, and then we'll say con ex3 dot name equal to Dylan, and you can see that we can modify this constant. So one one of the common things again is people say, oh, it's constants, it's never changing. That's not quite right. You can modify. Uh, non-primitive data types you can't you cannot change completely uh, primitive data types and then of course we discuss variable hoist, variable hoisting and block scope as well hey guys don't forget to hit that notification bell or smash that like button while you're at it and if you're interested i just released my latest course the 100 front end technical question challenge which is there to help you pass those front end technical interviews there's over 100 questions you can get it for just 9.99 the link is in the description below or use coupon code coding god